Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Mateo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. Hey, morning, Teo. Morning, John. Hey, obviously, if you're looking on the video, which, you know, five of you watch the video, all you definitely <laughs> download and listen to the podcast, um, we are, have a special guest today when we're live from VRMA. How are you, Margo? I'm good. How are you? I am great. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. I, I forgot my hat, apparently. Well, you know, <laughs> I never did. No, I, you know, that's probably my fault. <laughs> It's probably my fault. It wouldn't be the first or last time things are my fault. So no, it's good. So thank you so much. I can't, again, we just chatted about this. I can't remember if it's episode 77 or 78. It's one of the two. Okay. Um, season three. And uh, if you, finally. what's that? Finally. finally, it's been, it's been too long. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I get John shit all the time because, you know, we talk about the people we are on the podcast and you know, you know, I, and this is my partner in crime and yeah. everything, the DEI in the space and just all around our badass, right? So we talk about these things. Yes. And we're like, who hasn't been on our podcast? And I was like, you think she doesn't like our podcast? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> like, you no, know, and this is totally our speculation, but no, no I, I, say, no. I say all that because I'm just happy to say with my worst voice. Thank you for coming out. And I wish you'd do some vocal warm ups because we're kind of on day three of talking a lot. There's been a lot of talking. It's yeah. been a busy show. Yes. Um, you know, before we get into your story and, and how you came in this space, you know, I guess what let's let's do a little bit of show takeaways. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we've both had an opportunity to be on a to present with you, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, in separate in separate presentations, uh, which is exciting. And I, I totally appreciate the ask to, to be a part of that. That was great. Um, but I guess what's your biggest takeaway from the show this year? You know, I this is my sixth VRMA international. Yeah. Um, so I, or, no, maybe five because I think we're, I skipped one because of COVID. Yeah. Um, what is your biggest takeaway? You know, for me, this is just a big show. Like it's big in every way. There's more attendees. Well, we're in Las Vegas and the script right. is just gigantic. It's not human sized. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but there's more attendees. It actually was sold out uh, for like the first time ever, I think. They stopped mm -hmm. issuing new tickets. Um, the vendor booths are bigger. Yeah. Um, the sessions are very well attended. Even like, you know, I did a kind of a throw it together session with Mateo at the beginning. Yes. And we had a lot of people there and a lot of engagement. We had a lot of people at our session yeah. too. Um, so I'm just feeling like it's just growth, like a lot of interest, a lot of really interesting property managers, a lot of really interesting vendors. Everyone here is, uh, it's just feeling like it's booming, honestly. It's I, I feel the same way. And, you know, this is, we've been doing this a long time now. And to see, like, I love seeing a, the, you know, the new, the new people coming in and, and seeing, you know, the exciting a products and projects they're doing and like the different tech that's coming in. But what's also interesting to, is to see the tech that hasn't made it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, look back three years at the last, you know, major show we we're at or whatever. And, and there's a lots of new stuff coming into the space then. Mm -hmm. That isn't here today. Yes. You know, and and that's just the world we're in because some some things are gonna stick. You know, some things are funded, some things are are should be funded, some things shouldn't have been funded. Yeah. Um, but it's it's exciting. And you know, with you, it's exciting to see like on the PMS side and uh, you know, who's who's making the steps and kind of climbing that ladder and putting out a a new and interesting product and who have just kind of been well getting passed by. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, we, we, um, you know, with hostfully, the story of hostfully is really like, it's kind of about slow steps and one in front of the other. And, um, I feel like in this industry, in the market of, of COVID and travel and all these things that have happened over the past few years, I feel like there's like, you know, exploding fire bombs and we just kind of keep walking slowly and everyone's like, are you guys okay? And we're like, yeah, we're good. You know, just keep walking. So for totally really the journey has been like pretty slow and steady. This year we did expand the team a lot. Uh, but in terms of our like thought process, how we want to build the company, we're just like, just doing the right thing next. Right. Try not to honestly, try not to pay too much attention to what else is going on in the market. We're just trying to do what we think is the right thing. Um, and, and that's, that's her might work or might not work. I don't know, but I'm prepared to die trying. So, <laughs> well, we definitely didn't like, 
you couldn't go to a show um, and not miss you or your team. Yes. You had, you had some wild ass shirts, jackets. Oh, I should have brought a jacket. Yeah, I, I saw um, I saw some in, insane hats yesterday. Yeah. yeah. You guys, you know, I, I love this little, like, you we're, know. We're shameless is what it is. Oh, I love it. Love it. But I think, you know, it comes with a certain amount of age and, and, um, and love. <laughs> oh, I you know, like, like, is that is I think love? so. I think so. You know, like if you really love what you do and you love the yes. people you work for, you're like, sure, I'll wear a sandwich board, I'll wear a secret jacket, you know, yeah. I'll get up and tell a joke, even though I'm not a comedian in front of an audience. Like you just kind of let it go. Cause yeah. at this point it's just like trying. I mean, as long as it's the right thing for our customers and their employees, I don't care what it is. I'll do whatever. I think from a culture standpoint. The buy-in is there. Like I love, it. and I definitely want to get into you know your story and you as a leader in the space. But when you look at the, when you look at the team, there's no one like oh, I can't believe she has is doing this. I don't like everyone is enthusiastic. Yes, yeah. when I talk to them, they love it. They believe in it, and it like it, it just exudes from them. This yeah. you're like this I'm not wearing that. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that and, like there, you don't you know, get that. Not yeah, at all. no, and uh, I think I think it's also because we, there's like no one at Hostly who's too cool for school. You know, like it's very much like, hey, you want to try something new? Go for it. You want to, you have this like wacky idea. We want to hear it. Like right. you're, you're not happy. We want to hear that too. Right. So like a lot of the culture of Hostly is just being really open and authentic and transparent. And we are, um, I have to also say that that is very hard way to run a business. Like it, it right. requires a little bit more, um, and in terms of like emotional wells to sort of draw from sometimes. And I spend a lot of time thinking about my own mental health and um, help and and obviously my employees' mental health. And I think that that's what translates to the customer experience because I w- like we don't give anyone coaching on on being enthusiastic. That's like like right. I never said that, but I have said like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. We have these creative ideas. We're going to give it a shot. What do you guys think? We don't like it. Okay, let's do something else. Right. We we actually went through several ideas on the way to this conference that got scrapped. One was about the environment. We were going to do like an anti-sway kind of thing, which I think is actually kind of cool. It's not a, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, uh, we were also looking at doing, you know, like a thing where people can contribute to the environment. We just felt like it wouldn't show enough at the conference. Like it would be a good gesture, but it wouldn't have the same impression. And so then we were like, well, we could buy these jackets and it's pretty low key. And it's not, there's not a big impact on the environment right, right. actually from those jackets. And so we were like trying to, we looked at, that was just two of the ideas, but we had like several different ideas about what we wanted to do. I, I love it. The, uh, you know, to talk on the, in the environment thing a little bit and the uh, sustainability in, in this space. Like, I think, you know, truly I, I talk to my wife a lot about, you know, she talks about like all these conferences and stuff I go to and how wasteful they are. Mm-hmm. And, and like, and how, like how, you know, when she's watching documentaries on like, on and how this can be better. Yeah. And, you know, shout out to not at this conference, but book direct show, uh, definitely took like the most, like, biggest step forward in doing like a greener uh show you know with um and you know everyone had their own water balls there's water you know mm-hmm. stations there was no there was no cups like there's no yeah no single like, yeah, no plastics and uh wait, my, the biggest thing i thought was huge is you know we, we have all these these lanyards and these badges mm-hmm. and it's such a waste because i'm sick of taking them home i just throw them away and i have a collection no, I, and I really do. I, I, I know you do. I bet you, I yeah. bet you do. Of course you have a collection. But you, but you know, the actual biggest impact conferences, which is a problem, and we have not figured out how to solve this, is the flights. Oh, 100%. That is yeah. where we are really killing the environment. And it's, so it, it is a tough thing to do. I mean, you can buy carbon offsets. The effectiveness of those carbon offsets is pretty questionable. Okay. So yeah. we, we have a problem, but I think it's good that we say we have a problem, right? Like we need to acknowledge. It's acknowledged. It. And yeah, it's like, it, do you really need to fly someone in from Europe to come to this show? Maybe you can, they can go take a shorter flight. That's actually yeah. a really big impact. So I, I think, I think that I definitely, I definitely agree with that. This is real quick to wrap up the, my thought before I forget. Sorry. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. The, um, one of the, well, the biggest impact I thought that the book direct show did, and it's a much smaller scale is they had just paper, paper badges. Mm, just, it, just, just, no, 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 it was, it was cardboard, but it was like, th- yeah, like yeah. thinner cardboard. Yeah. And they had a lanyard that you returned. Yes. You at the, yeah, yeah you, you, they, they encourage you to return and they're yeah. using it next year yeah. for the next one. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's so brilliant because mine just end up in a, in a hotel garbage can yeah. every time. Yeah. 
And if I was Mateo, then yeah, I have a collection. Yeah, but it's all, and it's all supply chain stuff, right? Hundred like percent. Ordering it and shipping it, and anyway, I mean, it is a big issue. I I, I would love for us to improve that. Well, but I heard this podcast though was more about like founder stories and stuff. <laughs> Are we going to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. If John, if John will let us. If John will let us. No, like, so that is, and I, I, we really want to get into it because I, I think your story is incredible because of like, even with where I met you at, yeah. I, I've, for what I've witnessed, even from the time that yeah, we've been able to spend together and what I continue to see you do as a leader in the space, uh, as a, as a mom, as a wife. You and I, you know, I think we have a relationship and I love you. I, I we actually love, hang out like we because we have a friendship. It's different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this is, this is my partner in crime for sure. And every time I go to San Francisco, I call her to try and meet for lunch yeah. and breakfast. And, um, I, it's, it's, this is what I love about this space and this industry. John, you and I, we have a, have a similar relationship, yeah. but I, I, I've never heard your full story like your full story, how you got to this place, how you, how you came to be the founder, how you've, I, I've, I've seen the fight. We've talked about the fight. You've done so much. You've raised money. You are raising kids. You are a wife. Uh, you have a family. You love music. There's so much that makes you, you. Um, but how the hell did you get here? Where did you come from? In that yeah. Area? Well, you know, there is lots of people who are doing a lot of this. Their moms and dads, you are like mega dad, um, and, and you know, raising families and running companies and have a lot of interest. And I think um, for me personally, the reason why I'm kind of here, like CEO hostfully, has to do with the fact that I got a pretty lucky early in my career. Um, so I was at, um, I basically, I was a hippie living in Boulder. I was working in an architecture firm. I was making like, $28,000 a year okay. and loving life, um, dating a musician, having a, a super fun time there. And I started to try to apply to other jobs and I couldn't get them. And because I was a, I was like an office manager, business kind of okay. manager at an architecture firm. And people were like, we don't know what to think of her. It just, she just looks kind of like another secretary, which is fine. I get it. And then my dad's like, you need to go back to the grad school. And I was like, for what? And he's like, just go back and just get an advanced degree. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I didn't know which school to go to. So I interviewed doctors, lawyers at people who went to business school, I interviewed 10 of each. And the business school people were by far the happiest. They were like, I have so much flexibility and I can make all the yeah. money. And then the doctors were miserable because they were all still in school. And the lawyers were miserable because none of them were doing what they set out to do in the beginning. They right. wanted to fight for justice, but they ended up at a law firm or you know, doing like legal clerk stuff and they just weren't happy. So I was like, okay, business school it is. So I went to business school and all my friends were like, you're selling out are you going to become the man? And I was like, I guess I am, but like, I'm going to still be me. Yeah. So I really- More took, the woman, not- Exactly. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, but I, I actually took that comment to heart. And, and my, my friend Mendel, who, who said that to me, um, I thought, you know, I don't want to lose that part of myself. Like, I want to try and keep it. So I went to business school. I was a total oddball at business school. I was like the only one who had the background that I had. And then I interviewed and found a job at Apple. Um, which was a lucky break in some ways. I worked hard and I did a good job, but I hated working there because Apple's a weird company. And I don't know how many of your listeners know, but it's just super secretive. So like if you're working on this product over here and you're working on that product, like you will never be able to speak about but either you know, product, either product yeah. to each other. Interesting. And it's frustrating as the entrepreneur because you can't ask questions. I can't be like, hey, John, what are you working on? You're like, sorry, it's confidential. And that's how everything is at Apple. And I just didn't like it. So I was like, I got to leave. Um, so after that, I went to this company called Service Source, and this is where I, I got like just it was a bunch of things that happened that all just worked in my favor. I did a good job. I ended up getting promoted. And then I went and pitched myself to another leader in the company because I saw he was making more of an impact. And then he got promoted shortly after that. So I went from like being a senior manager to being vice president in three years in a public wow. company. Okay. Wow. And that is like really unusual. I also had a kid in the second. Wow. That's amazing. And I remember actually in the last promotion, sitting with the CEO in his office and he's like, so we want you to do this head of marketing role. And I was like, I was thinking in my head, oh my, there's no way, like, this is so stupid. I just had a baby. I'm like breastfeeding. I'm barely sleeping. Right. I'm so tired. We just got a no pair for the first time. I was like trying to figure out like my life, you know, like how it all works. And I remember just saying, like, just don't say anything, bro. Don't screw it up. Just, just say yes. 
just say yes and you'll figure it out later, which is like hospitality. Right. <laughs> like, I didn't know what I was going to do, honestly. And I took the job and I worked really hard for nine months. I actually brought my newborn to like a conference and had to run upstairs and pump all the time. Oh, man. It was, like, it was brutal. It's real life. Yeah. Uh, but people love babies and, you know, everyone wanted to hold a baby. It was pre-COVID, so everyone couldn't hold right, the baby. Right. It was fine. <laughs> um, so, you know, I took that job and then I was like just in this new phase. Like I'd run marketing at a public company with a $5 million budget and a huge team. And I was like mid thirties and I just saw my career being like CMO of outsourcing companies, which was basically kind of what service source was. It was a managed services company. Okay. And um, I was like, I just don't think that's my thing. You know, wasn't your calling. Yeah. It was, I was like, that's not going to make me happy in my life. So how do I figure out something different. So I was at the restaurant we went to for lunch, the Brenda's Mina 3. It's so amazing New Orleans so food. Um, so uh, I was at the restaurant with my husband and I was like, I just am not digging what I'm doing. And he's like, yeah, you should just quit. I was like, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, like, where do you have to lose? You know, you didn't take enough time off with the baby that you wanted to. You're tired. We're doing okay financially. Why don't you just take a break? So I did. Sure. And I, um, I was off for like three or four months, but for me, it's hard to not work. I like to work. I, yes. So, no, I, I know that feeling. Like, yeah. I, I can't stay, like stop working or thinking your brains things. It's, yeah. And I, I was like, what, you know, I was sleeping and watching Netflix and doing yoga and going for walks and meeting with people. But then I was like, I really want to start working. So then I met my co-founder, David, he, his, uh, his kids went to state preschool as mine. Okay. And he was iterating on this idea around his Airbnb and providing better hospitality. And we just kind of started there. And David um, is an exceptional sales guy. I thought the idea was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> when I, met him. I was like, I don't get this. I don't understand how you're going to make money. And actually that product itself does make money, but not a ton of money. So I wasn't totally wrong, but um, it, this is a new industry for me. I, I don't think that's new anymore. I, I now I know more about it. But um, w when was that though? When was definitely. when was when did you meet David? And when did you you know decide to go ahead and and start? And was it was it hostfully at that time? It was uh, 2015. Okay. The original name of we had a placeholder name which was Guidebook without the O's, which is a terrible name. Uh, <laughs> but if you look us up under like the you know Delaware Incorporation Articles of Incorporation Center Guidebook without the O's. Um, so we had a placeholder name and we just, we went to the Airbnb open. We went to two of them, the yeah. one in 2016 and one in 2017. Uh, I think the 2016 one was in Paris with 2017 one was in Los Angeles. Okay. And, um, and we just sort of started trying to figure this out. Like, could we do something? And really David is no, has known this industry a lot more. So he was guiding us on like, you know, how to solve the needs of the customer but my strength comes in into really listening and being more like of a product designer so how do we you know construct a solution that would be meaningful for this customer how do we go to market you know what's that look like and the two of us have extremely complementary skills um, right. i'm like the big idea vision person and he's like the follow-up and like you know follow up through person I, i'm admittedly not very good at that but you need that's, both that's, that's us yeah you need both. <laughs> so um so yeah, we've been working together now for a long time. I mean, we're like brother and sister at this point. You know, yeah. our families know each other. We live less than a mile from each other too. So it's nice. That's cool. That's super cool. I love I love this story. And I I love that you you realized that the that tra tra the, the trajectory that you were on yeah. you know, wasn't correct for you. It yeah. wasn't correct for your family. It wasn't correct for for where you were at that time in your life. And you're and you had the <laughs> balls yeah, <laughs> lack exactly. of better term to, to say you know what this isn't for me yeah this isn't you know i'm let's do something different and you took the time as hard as that was yes and i, I could i could definitely see if i if i had a you know a little yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to do it <laughs> john's the guy when he's like oh i have downtime and then he's like so i'll only be around a couple of days next week because i'm completely getting the kitchen floor <laughs> <laughs> downtime was the yeah. But, but isn't that true though? Most, I always, I have this adage, which is like, if someone is thinking about making a change, it probably means that the change will always be good. Yeah. You know, like when they come to you, like if a friend comes to you and they're like, you know, I'm thinking about doing this new thing or leaving my job or, you know, making a change by relation, you know, my interpersonal relationships, whatever. Usually they already need that, like the change they need to, they just need to be pushed to make that right. change. And rarely do people look back and say, I regret making the change. Right. 
very, very rarely, at least hardly ever in my experience. Yeah, no, I can't think of many, uh, maybe like one or two instances of like, you know, prior people I've, I've had conversations with or, you know, re- relationships with that are regretted a, a change they've made, but no, definitely. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, think, I think there's a strong psychological bias that we have, which is around safety and security and like no ability or whatever you want to call it, which is to say like a comfortable, I know, you know, the devil, you know, is better than the devil you don't. Right. Yep. But I think that like, that's, that's a terrible saying because actually the thing that you're going to is prop like 99% of the time is better than what you're at in right yeah. now. So you can't really compare them. They're not devil to devil. Right. It's definitely something not. else. <laughs> so we, d- we just have a bias against change as humans. Yeah. It's not uh, definitely. Yeah. The, so hopefully you, you're what it was when you first got started, obviously it's been all, you know, constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. You know, there, you know, we, we alluded earlier to, you know, tech that comes and fails and doesn't make it, you know, where, where do you see that hostfully like their strong suits for, for your software, what you provide and then how is that, you know, you keep making, you know, for, you know, more and more strides and you're getting, you're grabbing, you know, a, you know, an adequate market share or tell me if you are, I, I, I see you scaling. Yeah. I see, you know, your, your market share grab. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's nice to see. Yeah. It's fun. I think the 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 thing that it comes down to, and I actually think I don't do the best job at this, but I'm getting better at it. It's being really focused and really intentional about what you're doing. So if you want, like like with our product, we knew we wanted a platform product. We wanted to build a platform product. We wanted one that was like open, you know, as open API driven as it can be. And this has actually been a big differentiator from a lot of companies that have not done well, by the way. I think that that's right. high high degree of success is correlated with whether the platform is open. There's other companies that are doing that with Hostfully, um, which is great. Um, so, so, but we were very intentional about that and we do that all over the company. So like when we hire, like right now I'm talking to like four candidates who are amazing people. Okay. Right. But none of them are exactly perfect for the job that we want. And I will not pull the trigger on, on hiring them or on building the feature until I know exactly that that is what we want. Like, right. And, and it's, it's, um, you have to say no a lot and you have to, it's like you either, well, I think about it. I don't like some people just think about it. It's just saying no all the time, but I actually think about it as saying like, yes, to the thing that you're focused on. Right. And it's about that intentionality of also making a change. Right. So like when I decided that I wanted to be a founder of a company, I actually didn't care about being a CEO, but I did want to be a founder because I wanted to influence culture. That's what I care about. And that's still right. what I care about today. I'm like, I want to be the one who influences culture. Uh-oh. I want to be the one who says, you should take a vacation. You should take paternity leave. You should take maternity leave. You should take a day off when you're, when you're um, having, you know, your parents are having a hard time. We actually have a person who could come to this conference because her dad's sick. Yeah. Like, you should be home taking care of your family. So that is culture of hostfully. And I am very, very focused on that. And, and I don't like, I don't give it all. I'm very, as you guys know, I'm like very open. I like love people and I love ideas and I love talking about things, but on the things that I really care about, I don't give it all. So I would encourage like listeners to find the things that they really, really care about and like don't sacrifice right. because life's too short. We don't have that much time here. I was, so, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, get done what you want to get done. <laughs> you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, this is still just, you know, you know, we're driven by work. We're driven by founding products and, and projects and, and doing different things. But at the end of the day, it's just, it, it still comes down to it's, it's just what we do to make money. Yes. You know what I mean? Ultimately, you know, families and everything else are, are by far the most important. Yeah. Relationships are by far the most important. Yes. I, I fully wholeheartedly believe that like, like work is a huge part of my identity and not everyone does, who does that. And, and like, like, in my spare time, I like working. Yes, and not not everyone drives like my my wife is not that, mm-hmm. um, and that's cool, that's and that's why we work well yeah. together. Yeah. And uh, but but to each his own. Like 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 find out what drives you, yeah. and, and and keep going in that direction. Yeah, and I I mean I also like I I love being a mom. Being a mom is my favorite yeah. job, and I will do my mommy as much as I can, but I also know that I'm a better mom when I work. Right. And and that's also just like a personal choice. Everybody needs to make, but just knowing yourself and like, knowing, yeah, just like figuring out your own kind of center point, I think is really important. What are, so that's an interest. I think that's interesting. Cause this goes into this question. I've been thinking about trying to ask this and not in like the, this dramatic boring way, but like, 
what are your whys that have built your leadership style? Like mm. how, how it, it, I've heard so many different pieces mm -hmm. of, in knowing you of the things that come together and I feel like they make you, you but one of the things like, I, I want to know your why and how it, it comes off. So it, it's, it, it comes off very deliberate, very intentional um, in the things that you do, but I, I know it's not always that way. And then, yeah. you know, but lots of different things influence that, but um, that's always my question. Like how, how did you get to this? Cause it's an outlier. Now I, I've seen you as a leader. I look up to and admire there's a lot of leaders and a lot of people in the space that I don't, and, and it's not a bad, it's not like I don't like them, but I just, you know, I, don't, you. I don't necessarily <laughs> think that, you know, yeah. I think leadership, like leadership's birth, right? Like it's yeah, the action of what you do. That's right. And I, I think it's when you see it done right, yeah. it speaks for itself. Well, I truly believe that everybody is a leader. Like, I really do believe that. And I believe that like, I, I, uh, for, for the people who I work with and my friends, they'll tell you that I'm like the first, like relinquish my leadership or control over the situation. Like I totally find like going along with the flow. Like even last time we were trying to figure out what to do and, and people are like, I want to do this. Or I want to do that. And I'm like, honestly, I'm just dumb for whatever. Like, let's just do this. Like I, I do not, I think I don't have a sense for one needing to be in control. And I think that actually gives me an advantage. Um, the second thing is that I, I do spend a lot of time thinking about how other people feel. I'm just the classic, like, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Where are they coming from? How are they feeling? What would be important to them? When I'm thinking about how I interact with the people on my team, even you, like, even friends, I'll be like, where are they coming from? Like, how's Mateo's family? He's in town. Like, I want to, you know, he's in town for a difficult thing, right? Like, what what's that yeah. going to feel yeah. like? He's coming to the city to meet me. Like, I'm really thinking about, like, the other person in a in a totally like generous way and I, I just truly I don't really I don't try to get out I don't try to sell or like right uh lean into that uh, I think the other thing that I learned early on there were a couple key moments and and it's so funny like they come up in these weird ways but we were at this conference with service source the company I was with and um there was a guy who was drawing caricatures and it was like let's try you at your best, John. And he would interview the other people on your team and be like, what's John like when he's just like on fire, you know? And then it was like, what's John like at his worst? Oh, no kidding. And like, what, you know, what are the things that get in your way? And for me, the drawing was Margot at her best was like a ninja, like so capable and people want to watch you and like, you, they, they want you to be, they want you to lead. And then the, the person at my worst was the scream, you know, the you know, like when the first, yes. with oh, the, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. That, that painting. Um, and they basically said, like, when you let your anxiety or your like worries get in the way, then you can also devastate a project. So it's like, right. it, it's, it's binary. It either goes like up or down. You know what I mean? It's, it's crippling if you let that yeah, it's like get in the way. The, yeah. the, more, the more you can stay in that calm, collected, cool energy, like people are going to want to listen to you. And I took it to heart, like really took it to heart. Also, it's great to have a drive. I'm a very visual person. Um, I, I kind of want us all to do this. Actually. Yeah, no, I, I'm like, I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we should do this. Yeah, I'm also oh my gosh. There you go. We're going to have a character. And so, yeah, like, go. like a self-coaching kind of thing. Anyway. I like it. Yeah, we should totally do that. Um, so we did that and I took it to heart and I thought, okay, so if I can just be calm and just like make the dis best decisions that I can, I could be in that ninja mode all the time. Right. Oh my gosh, if I'm in that, like if I'm in the ninja mode only, 30% of the time now, what if I was in it 60% of the time or 90% of the time? Right. Like my life would be effing amazing, you know, because <laughs> right. I, I'd just be happy and I'd feel good. So a lot of it is just managing my own mental health. And when I'm feeling anxious, like I do, I mean, we all yeah. feel anxious and we're about to present or when we have to make a difficult decision or make hard trade-offs, like it's anxiety producing. Right. And so a lot of what I do is like, I will find what it is that will make me feel good, whether it's sleeping more, which is a big one for me, going for a run, listening to music, singing for me is like a big cathartic thing that feels really good. Um, so I spend a lot of time like managing my own mental health. And I think like the leadership style is just a byproduct of mental health. Sure. So a lot, that's, that's a lot can be learned. A lot can be learned from this. I think that there's a, you know, it, I love that you said every one of us are leaders. And if, if people would actually you know, think of themselves as leaders, yeah. you know, more and as opposed to just, you know, part of something, you know, that, that they're just, you know, like a cog yeah. and, and actually lead and then take this kind of stuff to heart. 
I feel that overall, like, you know, we'll see leaps and bounds in, yes. in, in, and I like to say this industry because just in anything in general, yeah, yeah. you know, and so it's, 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 we, I love your, how you lead and, and what you bring to this industry is refreshing. Um, and we, we appreciate this a lot. And yeah. Great I mean, just imagine if we all could be operating at our highest potential, like how much better our lives would be together. Right. That's kind of yeah. where I'm coming from. And I, I'm not, I actually am not a growth person, more of an efficiency person, like at heart. Yeah. And I'm always like, there's so many really smart people here. And, and, and we do, we don't do things like we don't just state the problem that we have. Like even with the environment, it's like, just say, just say it out loud. You're smart. I'm smart. You're smart. We, we all have great ideas. Like if right. we're able to like operate at a higher level and really share those ideas and feel confident that we're just going to have a better working environment, whether it's inside the company or outside the company with our customers, whatever. So I, I just, I like, again, like life is too short not to live in a joyful um, life like that. Love it. Yeah. I, uh, before we get out of here, I want to make sure that like, we know what's new for hostfully, like we know, you know, what's new for you. I know it's, it's, yeah. it's, we've come to the end, uh, end of conference season for us. Yeah. Most of us aren't going to be traveling for a while. Um, uh, but we, there's lots of, uh, there's lots of follow-up. Q4 is very busy. We're, yes. we're going to be, uh, all of us working our asses off to make yes. sure that, that we get to where we need to be by the end of the year. But what's, exactly. what's new for hostfully where what's on the horizon? Well, um, we, I will say this now, it's a little early, but we, uh, we're launching our mobile app. It actually is live on Google, um, Google store as of yesterday. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, congratulations. And then, uh, in the app store review, but it will get it through it. We just had one minor hiccup and yeah, yeah. I'll make the adjustment. Um, and our tagline is hostfully makes you happy. Nice, nice. There you go. <laughs> which I really love. <laughs> Shout out to Brad on our team. Yeah, there you go. That much. Uh, so we're having, a, we have a mobile app. It's really powerful. It, it lets you manage all of your stuff on the go. It has all hostfully is really awesome, uh, and powerful, like distribution, um, and calendar, essential calendar functionality nice. on it. Um, so anyway, that's like a really big thing for hostfully and it's so beautiful. Like, I'm just really excited to, bring I really, I can't wait to demo it. Like, as because, yeah. you know, it's truly, you know, me coming from the PMS world before I came over to Hopper. Yeah. Like it's what most software sucks at like yeah. most of our property managed software is their mobile app, like application is horrible yeah and i and i try to like i'm like all right how about put myself in the shoes of a property manager that are trying to go ahead and get this stuff done mm -hmm. you can't no you can't and so like i'm, I'm really excited you know, can i get a demo soon like oh, I, oh absolutely I, I, and, and, and like it's actually in it's been a private beta with a few customers and universally they've been happy with it we actually slowed down the release because it wasn't working great for the larger sale property managers, but then we made a bunch of improvements and now right. it works really well. So that is huge. And it's just a really fun, new, shiny object for us, honestly. Nice. Uh, uh, that's new. Uh, you know, we've, we really have leaned into our partner status with Airbnb, Booking.com and Verbo, because that's one of the places, that's one of the reasons why companies come to us, right? They yeah. want really good distribution capabilities. And um, we're working closely with all those companies to like, facilitate the best interaction that the property manager can have, whether it's like, you know, adding all the amenities and like approving your search results and just having like, there's, you know, different, the different channels call it different things, but basically like how fast we are at responding to the data calls in right. there. And we are killing it with all three. Uh, and like, we're, we're in the, we're in the like, time of year where you know everyone's kind of hustling to like get the the last the, the rest of the year done but actually we've already done that with the channel with those partners and so like now we're in the bonus period which right. has been really fun and and actually we've been seeing like our comparative data um against other pms companies with some of those they like blind all the data but we could see that our growth is is actually outpacing almost everybody else in the industry um so it's really cool so that's really fun and i think for for property managers in the space, like that's something that is um it's it's really hard to learn as a property manager how important that is until shit breaks, right? right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so like that's that's yeah. the big thing for us. Uh, we also have expanded our team a lot. We grew yeah. from 30 to around 80 people. Wow. Yeah. So we've got a, a big team, but like you said, they're just all so enthusiastic and passionate and working together. So it's been really amazing. And they look good yeah. in peacock, uh, you know, colors and it's amazing. They speak 15 languages. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking languages. Yes. Good coverage. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. No, Margo, thank you so much for joining us. This thank has been you. a real treat. I'm, you know, 
we squeezed it in. We made it happen. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have to come back. I know. I'll do it again. And I'm glad you were able to get this person way more. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. Thanks again. Thank you. This podcast is a Hospitality.fm production.